This is a video of DNA structure in 3D. I'll give you a moment to put on your VR headset or realize you're in the wrong place and find the 2D version of this video. There's a link in the video description. Get that headset in place and get ready to experience DNA in 3D. Deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, is an absolutely incredible molecule. The arrangement of its subunits codes nearly all of the genetic information that makes you, well, you. Most of your DNA is located in the nucleus of the cell, and when it is time, DNA makes every protein and enzyme in your body. Enzymes in turn synthesize all of the biological molecules you need to make on your own. Carbohydrates, hormones, RNA, everything that's necessary for your tissues and organs to function. Here, we're looking at a small piece of DNA rotating in 3D space. We'll come back to this structure, but for now let's focus on a single repeating unit of DNA, which is called a nucleotide. The nucleotide is made up of a phosphate group, which carries a negative 2 charge on the oxygen atoms. A 2-deoxyribose sugar, named this way because this is carbon-2 of the sugar and it does not have an OH group. Finally, we have a nitrogenous base here. In DNA, there are four common bases. This nucleotide is cytidine monophosphate. If we remove the phosphate group, this fragment is referred to as a nucleoside, and this one is called cytidine. To remember the difference between nucleotides and nucleosides, I use this mnemonic device. A nucleotide is the total fragment, and the nucleoside, with an S, contains only the sugar, which begins with S. If we simplify this structure even further, we can focus in on the base pair and see what makes the four bases unique. The bases are called nitrogenous bases because they all contain nitrogen atoms in their rings. This nitrogenous base is the molecule cytosine and is a pyrimidine ring. Pyrimidines are six-membered heterocycles with nitrogen atoms at the one and three positions of the ring. Cytosine has an amine group and a carbonyl group, this C double bond O, coming off of the pyrimidine ring. Two of the nitrogenous bases are pyrimidines, and thymine is the other one. Thymine differs from cytosine because it contains two carbonyl groups, an extra CH3, and a different arrangement of the double bonds within and around the ring. The other nitrogenous bases are purine rings. This one is adenine. Purines contain a six-membered ring fused to a five-membered ring, with four nitrogen atoms within the rings in this arrangement. Adenine is characterized by an amine group attached to the ring. The final base we need to know is guanine. The NH2 group of adenine is replaced by a carbonyl, and there's an NH2 group at this position which was unsubstituted in adenine. Because DNA is so long and made up of so many nucleotides, it is common to abbreviate the base pairs as the first letter of their name. So the pyrimidines are C and T, and the purines are A and G. We had to look closely at the structures of the bases because they are key in holding the DNA double helix together, which we're looking at now. The orientation of the nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen atoms allows hydrogen bonding to occur between the strands, and this is why DNA exists as a double helix. The pyrimidine T pairs up with the purine A, making two hydrogen bonds between the base pairs. This one from the NH to another nitrogen atom, and this one from the carbonyl outside the ring to the hydrogen atom of this amine. The other pairing occurs between the pyrimidine C and the purine G. The hydrogen bonding is similar, however there's an extra amine carbonyl hydrogen bond. The three hydrogen bonds that hold G and C together add extra stability to the double helix, and DNA that is rich in G and C base pairs comes apart at the hydrogen bonds or melts at a higher temperature experimentally. The sugars and phosphate groups bond covalently to make up the backbone of the DNA molecule, and we can see the alternating units here, 
phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar. The two paired strands do not run in the same direction. They actually run anti-parallel or in opposite directions. We can see this by looking at the sugars associated with a single base pair. Notice how the oxygen atom points upward here, but points downward on this side? Each terminus of the DNA strand can be labeled as either 3' prime or 5', prime, and this depends on the direction that the sugar is facing. The numbering of the sugar carbon atoms begins where the sugar attaches to the nitrogenous base. Now we can count the carbon atoms in the order that they are connected. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Since this terminal OH group is on the fifth carbon of the sugar, this is a 5' prime end. Let's wind around the DNA strand so that we can look at the other end of that same strand. Notice the OH group here is on the 1, 2, 3, third carbon atom. This is the 3' prime end of that same strand. Now, let's retrace our steps, zooming back up to that 5' prime end that we first looked at. And now we're going to move over to its complementary strand that it's hydrogen bonded to. The free OH group here is at the 1, 2, 3, third carbon atom. So this is another 3' prime end. In order to make new cells to grow or replace dead cells, the entire strand of DNA needs to be copied. To do this, the double helix is unzipped by enzymes, and an exact copy of each strand of DNA is made before the cell divides up with perfect copies of the genetic material in each cell. What we're looking at now is DNA being unzipped by an enzyme called a helicase. Notice how the unwound strand of DNA is held apart from its complementary strand by being buried into the interior of the enzyme? This structure was actually not captured using protein crystallography. It was done using a technique called cryo-electron microscopy, and the pioneers of this technique won the Nobel Prize for Cryo-EM in 2017. If you unwound all of the DNA in your cell and lined it up end to end, it would be about two meters long. Considering the fact that each nucleotide is only about 60 nanometers, much smaller than even the wavelength of light, these are extremely long chains of nucleotides. In order to package the DNA strands to fit into the nucleus of your cells, proteins called histones wind the DNA around themselves in what is called a nucleosome. Scientists have been able to capture crystal structures of parts of these nucleosome complexes, and that's what we're looking at right now. Notice the way the DNA becomes wrapped around these proteins in such an orderly fashion? So amazing. I truly hope you enjoyed stepping inside of DNA. If you want to take more macromolecular journeys with me, please like this video and subscribe to my channel.